y'all, it's me, Lola again. I just got done texting my girl Rosie in San Marcos. We were seeing how many different elements we could name. We got up to like 30. Then I could tell Rosie was totally cheating when she started busting out ones like germanium and bismuth and seaborgium. I totally called her on it. Then she was wondering, how do they organize all those elements? I told her there are more than the 30 we just named. There's almost 120. So I told her about the periodic table, how scientists arrange all the elements, and how they're classified by their properties. Let's look at the periodic table of elements. Depending on what book or website, the periodic table might look a little different, but it will always look more or less like this one. Looks pretty crazy, huh? You can see how many different elements there are. The periodic table is laid out in order of atomic number. Let's write that down. Maybe you remember that the atomic number determines the identity of the element, and it's the number of protons that determines the element's atomic number. So, it's like the driver's license of carbon is six, because only carbon has six protons. This means that carbon is the sixth element in the periodic table. Chlorine is further down, because its atomic number is 17. And capernicium is way at the bottom because it has 112 protons in its nucleus. All right, you get it. And remember how we said protons and neutrons have mass, but electrons don't? Well, the further down the periodic table you go, the more protons and neutrons are in the atom, so the heavier it gets. So hydrogen up there is the lightest, because it only has one proton. Carbon has six protons and six neutrons. This gives it a mass of 12, so it's further down the table. Gold is down there because it's a pretty heavy element. It has 79 protons and a total atomic mass of 197, so it's even further down the line. The periodic table is kind of mapped in periods and groups. The periods are the rows and the groups are the columns. Let's write that down before you forget it. So if you look at it, the periodic table has seven periods. The two rows at the bottom actually belong squished up with the rest of the table. The reason there are seven periods has to do with where the electrons live in the atom. Remember how these, we said that the electrons buzz around the nucleus in a cloud? Well, we can also pretend they orbit the nucleus in a specific level of energy. The number of the period tells you the number of energy levels the atom has for those electrons to buzz around. Check it out. Hydrogen is on the first row, so it is in period one. If you look at the atom, it only has one energy level for its electron to orbit around on. Carbon is in the second period, so that means it has two energy levels for its six electrons. And since gold is in period six, it has six energy levels for all its electrons. Now I want to talk about groups. Elements in the same group have similar chemical properties. That's important enough to write down. So all the elements in group three act pretty much the same. Elements in group 17 have very similar properties, and let's see why. Look at carbon again. See how two of its electrons fill up the first energy level, and there's four electrons out on the second level? Well, the electrons on the outer energy level are called valence electrons. Let's look at that definition. You might want to write that down. The number of valence electrons is real important. Elements in the same group have the same number of valence electrons. For example, Let's look at three different elements, copper, silver, and gold. Since we know a bunch about the periodic table, we can already tell a bunch about these guys. Copper is in period four, so we know it has four energy levels for its electrons. Count them up. Silver is a row below, so it must have five energy levels. We already know gold has six energy levels for all its electrons. What else can we tell? Well, since copper, silver, and gold are all in the same group, they must have the same number of valence electrons. Yeah, check it out. They all have one electron all by itself in that outermost energy level. Here's why the number of valence electrons is so important. The number of valence electrons determines the properties of that element. That's real important to know. So since copper, silver, and gold all have the same number of valence electrons, they're put in the same group. And since they're in the same group, they must have the same chemical properties. And that makes sense. Mm, what do we know about copper, silver, and gold? Here's copper, a heavy, shiny, bendable metal. Here's silver, another heavy, shiny, bendable metal. And gold, yep, heavy, shiny, and bendable. If you think about it, there's not a lot of differences between these elements. 
unless you're in the limbic psych S. And this happens all over the periodic table. Elements in the same group have the same reactivity because they have the same number of valence electrons. Elements in group 1 all react to water pretty violently. Elements in group 18 are all gases that don't really react at all. And so on and so on. So I told Rosie that the periodic table isn't so crazy. Just remember that it's arranged into periods by the number of the elements' energy levels. And also that the elements are put into groups by their number of valence electrons. And since the number of valence electrons determines the way an element reacts, all elements in the same group are going to have similar properties. Well, that's it for me. Until I see you next time, Slola saying, there's always room for you in my periodic table. Bye, guys!